There is a close relationship between the fruit or seed structure and the way it is disseminated or dispersed around. But why is the dispersal necessary? Fruits and seeds are necessary to disperse in order to avoid overcrowding a particular area with the same plant species. Competing for food and sunlight with the parent plants is tough for the newly grown plants. On the other hand, the dispersal of the seeds will also help the plants to find new, favorable habitats and also help them to control the spread of various diseases and arthropod attacks. The dispersal of fruits and seeds is affected and aided in different ways by the external agents such as wind, animal or water. Many plants have their fruits or seeds modified to ensure their proper dispersal at the right time. Dispersal by wind Here's an interesting phenomenon. Fruits and seeds have, over the years, adapted well to its propagation by wind. Take the pretty-looking wildflower dandelion, for example. If the flowers don't dry up and release their parachutes of fine hairs, we won't be able to see them on almost every nook and corner in every spring. Fruits and seeds that depend on the wind for their dispersal mostly have these fine hairs or more features like flat, wing-like structures and large surface area, which increases its buoyancy in the air, like a maple seed. They may be small and light, so they can float in the air and be readily blown about by the wind, for example, orchid seeds. The wings or parachutes of the fruits or seeds are formed from different parts of the flowers. For example, in the case of cotton, the organ of dispersal is the set of hairs around the tester. Dispersal by animals The fruits or seeds which the animals forage on are the ones that are most likely to be dispersed. Therefore, most of the fruits dispersed by animals are edible. In some fruits, e.g. tomatoes, the whole pericarp is succulent as it stores food minerals. In lemons and oranges, the fruit chamber has succulent hairs. Food materials are mainly stored in these hairs. Succulent fruits are scented and their skins are often brightly colored to attract animals. For example, the peel of orange contains glands which produce a scented and rather volatile oil to attract animals. The whole fruit may be eaten by animals such as birds, bats, cats, dogs, etc. The small and hard seeds are indigestible and may be excreted far away from the parent plant. Sometimes, the seeds are spat out by animals and very often still capable of germination. In other cases, the animals carry the fruits and only eat some part of them, then leave the seeds behind to germinate. An example of this is mango. Some dry fruits such as xanthium can also be dispersed by crossing animals. Fruits adapted for this method of dispersal possess hook-like structures by which they can adhere onto the fur or skin of animals passing by. These fruits may later be brushed off the animals' bodies, or they may fall off when the hooks shrivel. The fruits may also adhere to our clothing and be dispersed in a similar manner. Dispersal by water Flowing water in the ocean, rivers and streams are important agents of dispersal. Aquatic plants and plenty of plants living on riverbanks or the seashore depend on water dispersal. These fruits and seeds are adapted for floating and can drift for considerable distances. For example, the coconut fruit incorporates a waterproof skin. Inside the skin, a fibrous husk containing numerous air spaces lighten the fruit and enable it to float on the water. The seed within it contains a store of food, that is, the meat in the coconut, and there is sufficient water in the seed to enable its germination even on sandy shores. We can see another example from the seeds of the water lily. The seeds have an arrow a small float, which holds air. It can float on the water away from the parent plants until the arils decompose. Then, they sink to the bottom of the river or pond and germinate. Here's an interesting fact. Some fruits do not depend on external aids such as wind, animals or water to disperse their seeds. When these fruits are drying up, they burst open suddenly with great force to throw out the seeds, as in the case of ripe balsam fruits. They eject the seeds away from the parent plant. Other examples are rubber fruits and the legumes of many plants. Legumes are dry fruits that split along both edges or sutures. Peas and beans are legumes. In these legumes, the pericarp shrinks as it dries up, building up tension, which force open the fruits suddenly.